Chapter 20 of The Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Chapter 20 Christ and Moses. Hebrews chapter 3 verses 1 to 6. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of a heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also was Moses in all his house. For he hath been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, by so much as he that built the house hath more honour than the house. For every house is builded by some one, but he that built all things is God. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house for a testimony of those things which were afterward to be spoken but Christ as a son over his house, whose house we are, if we hold fast our boldness and the glorying of our hope firm unto the end. The writer had just spoken, chapter 2, verse 17, of Christ as a merciful and faithful high priest. Later, chapter 4, verse 14, to 5, verse 7, he will speak again of him as merciful. Here he wishes first to set before us his faithfulness. To this end he compares him to Moses, of whom God himself had spoken. Numbers chapter 12 verse 7 My servant Moses, who is faithful in all my house. But he goes on at the same time to prove that Christ the Son is more than Moses the servant. We have seen that Christ is more than the angels through whom the law was given. We shall yet see that he is more than Aaron, through whom the law was ministered. He is more than Moses too, the mediator of the law, the servant in the house of God. In every aspect the New Testament has more glory than the Old. Moses and Aaron together represented God in Israel. The one as apostle or messenger, the other as high priest. In the person of Jesus the two offices are united. As high priest, he is merciful as Aaron. As apostle of our profession, he is faithful as Moses. Moses was the great apostle or messenger of God, the Old Testament type of Christ as prophet. He had access to God and brought the word of God to the people. Christ is the great apostle or prophet of the new covenant. He ever spake of himself as the one whom the Father had sent. In him, the Son, God speaks to us. As apostle, he is God's representative with us, making God known to us. As high priest, our representative with God, bringing us into his presence. As high priest, he stands linked to us by his mercy and compassion, as he, now having died for us, helps us in our temptation and weakness. As apostle, he pleads for God with us, and proves himself entirely faithful to him. We need to consider Christ Jesus not only as a high priest in his mercy, but as the apostle of our profession, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also was Moses in all his house. Faithfulness is trustworthiness. As we see Jesus faithful to him who appointed him, our faith and trust will rise into perfect and joyful assurance that he will indeed most faithfully fulfil all God's promises in us, that in us too he will be faithful as a son over his own house. Nothing gives such strength to faith as resting on the faithfulness of Jesus. The glory of Jesus is the glory of Christianity, is the strength and glory of the Christian life. Moses was in every respect a type of Christ. In what he suffered from his very brethren, in his rejection by his brethren, in his zeal and his sacrifice of all for God, in his willingness to die for his people, in his fellowship with God, we see the marks of an apostle as they were to be perfectly revealed in Christ Jesus. And yet it was all only a shadow and a prophecy, a testimony of things to come. For he hath been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, by so much as he that built the house hath more honour than the house. For every house is builded by someone, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant, for a testimony of those things which were afterwards to be spoken. But Christ as a son over his house. Moses was himself but a part of the house, 
Jesus Christ is the builder. Moses was a servant in the house. Jesus was a son over his own house. Whose house we are? The true house, the true dwelling of God, is his people. In Christ we are builded together for a habitation of God in the Spirit. Of the church as his body, of the individual soul, Christ says, we will come and make our abode. It is the characteristic of spiritual things that each part is also a living whole. Collectively and individually we are Christ's house. He that would know the faithfulness of Christ in his house must yield himself to be his house, must allow Christ as son over his house to be master, to have the keys alone, to hold undisturbed possession and rule. Whose house we are. Later on we shall see how the great work of Christ as the great high priest over the house of God is to open the way into the holiest of God's dwelling, his living, loving presence. The word we have here today tells us beforehand that the holiest is not only with God and that we must enter into it, it is also with us and God will come into us too. God's heart is our habitation, our heart is God's habitation. When Jesus spake, Abide in me, and I in you, he taught us that mutual relationship. The more my heart goes out to Jesus and lives in him, the more he comes to live in me. Whose house we are? Would you have the full experience of all that means and brings? Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider Jesus, who is faithful to him that appointed him as a son over his house. Yield yourself to him as his house, and trust his faithfulness to do his work. And remember, as the epistle teaches us the spiritual meaning of the external symbols of the Old Testament, that we must not seek their fulfilment again in other external things, however much we conceive of them as infinitely higher and greater, but in that inward spiritual experience which comes when Jesus dwells in us as his house. It is as the indwelling Saviour that he does his work, whether it be prophet, priest, or king, whose house we are. Faithful to God. This is the spirit of God's house, the mark of being of his household. It was so with Moses the servant. It was so with Christ the Son. It must be so through the whole household. Be it so with us, faithful to God whose house we are. Not like a house of stone and wood in which the indweller has no living connection with it. No, Christ dwells in us as a life within a life, inspiring us with his own temper and disposition. Our moral and spiritual being, our power of willing and living and acting, within these he comes and dwells in us, a divine, hidden, but mighty power and operation. Faithful as son over his house. But he must be master in his own house. Not only an honoured guest, while thou hast the keys and the care. So it is with many Christians. So it may not be. No, give him the keys. Give him entire control over the whole being, as son over his house. He will blessedly prove how faithful he is to God and to thee. Consider well the faithfulness of Christ. This will work in thee the fullness of faith. End of chapter 20